Hello, Rom Mithril here once again, getting back to Mag Mammal 3, and it's time to look at the judge commentary for the last three stages we played. Starting with 171st place, Not Delivering on Promises by Giga Otomia, 24 out of 100. This stage got 3.8 in design, 5 in fun, 2.4 in creativity, 4 in aesthetics, 8.8 in functionality, with no time penalty. Mick, 15 out of 100. You know, if you promised me nothing, then how would you not deliver on promises that don't actually exist? Thinking. But then, I suppose there's some promises the level won't deliver on in the end anyway. Anyway, for the level itself, this level is short, has a lot of arbitrary design, infinite weapon energy for some reason, and absolutely no checkpoints. It's definitely not an award winner. I wouldn't even call it fully functional. Still, there's things in here to note. The crab room was memorably silly, and the Wispy Quickman, which I know is from a ROM hack, was an okay twist on the old dev kit boss. That's about all there is to say here, though. Oh right, that... that is from a ROM hack, isn't it? Which one was that? Rockman No Constancy? That sounds right. I admittedly don't play a lot of ROM hacks, I just... I don't tend to have a good time with a lot of them, but I do know I have seen that. Shinryo, 13 out of 100. I don't get it. Oh dear, and I just noticed Shinryu's portrait there, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got next to nothing for this one. There's a lot of things I could ask why to in this stage, such as, why are there no checkpoints anywhere in this level, even if it is incredibly short? Why does this level give you infinite ammo for every weapon? Why is the token hidden via an invisible ladder? Regardless of what the answers to those questions may be, the rest of this level's problems are all glaringly obvious. The only other semi-notable thing in this stage is the modified Quick Man fight at the end. Aside from the fact that he turns into a small flame while he's jumping, for some reason, his projectiles are a lot easier to avoid than vanilla Quickman's are, provided you stay close to him. The farther away you are, the wider the spread on the flames, which can often put you in situations where it's near impossible to avoid taking damage. All things considered, I wouldn't be surprised if this level was intended to be a joke. Even by those standards, though, I wouldn't say it's particularly good. Yeah, I'm not sure why the invisible ladder was necessary, I don't know if that's just a quirk of the engine, at the very least, I felt like being able to get on that roof was a bit of a tell. It looked suspicious to me. But yeah, you don't really get a smooth transition and instead need that ladder, which... I'm just lucky I checked for it. Patchy, 39 out of 100. Promising. Level only consists of a few screens with very basic platforming challenges, and enemy placements aren't all that inspiring either. It's also borrowing a portion of Mega Man 1 Fortress Stage 2 at one point, which is odd to say the least. What's even odder is that all of your weapons are given infinite ammo. Other than one part with a horde of endless crabs, the whole level is completely trivialized by the fact that you can keep spamming Tornado Blow. Yeah, that's a dangerous one to give infinite ammo to. Didn't think about that. The boss is just a lazy quick man edit. The lack of any checkpoints in the level makes getting to him a bit of a hassle, but the stage is extremely short and easy anyway. There's also this weird unmarked secret lying around with, uh, pretty broken rewards all around that you can just keep grinding for once you know that they're there. Hmm. The stuff around the token I don't think was overly broken. Was there something else that I missed? Flashman85, 17 out of 100. I imagine your list of promises when designing this level looked something like this. I promise to not load a bunch of Mega Man 2 assets into a shotgun and fire wildly at the screen. I promise to show players how much I care about them by placing at least one checkpoint literally anywhere. I promise to communicate to players that they have infinite weapon energy before they get tired of dying repeatedly to challenges that are completely unmanageable with the buster. I promise to spare players from awkward screen transitions, aimless free scrolling, and bogus challenges such as looking for a token hidden in an unseen room, accessible only by a tiny invisible ladder that is not telegraphed or hinted at in any way. I mean again, I did kind of find the sloped roof suspicious. I promise to not create a secondary secret room containing an outrageous reward requiring dev team intervention to maintain game balance. What was in there? What did I miss? Now I'm curious. I promise that the boss will have all his sprites replaced with a cute little flame, and that his projectiles will be free of technical polish problems, thus ensuring he's taken seriously and not just written off as a slapdash joke. I promise that creative dev kit boss alterations, acceptable music selection, and compulsory functionality won't account for the majority of points this level receives. Whether the actual intent was here, please promise me that your next level will be just like this one. Ouch. A spark, 36 out of 100. By the unlimited fiery strength I now hold in my grasp, the world will tremble at the purple might of 
Spam, 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 spam. Lovely spam! Wonderful spam! <laughs> I do love Monty Python, so I appreciate the reference. Hey, we aren't gonna get sued by Michael Palin, right? Ugh, I don't like spam. Eh, neither do I. I've, I've never cared for it. Or to use the proper Monty Python voice. I don't like spam! And... blanks. So yes, overall this stage, I feel like the main point against it for me was just the lack of any checkpoints. Overall, it didn't really do anything too terribly offensive, and like I said, it's <laughs> it's just fun to see Quickman's AI working the way it's supposed to, though that might just be a dev kit thing, because I know the boss was an edit to an existing dev kit thing from what they were saying. But yeah, I've seen the videos analyzing why Quickman in Mega Man 2 is broken, and it, why <laughs> why his patterns are so unpredictable. It's because he's literally glitching. <laughs> Very strange, that. 170, a piece of cake, but with aesthetics. By Nixbig, 26 out of 100. 7.4 in design, 5.2 in fun, 2.2 in creativity, 2.2 in aesthetics, and 9 in functionality. Mick, 20 out of 100. Well, I guess it's half true. It's certainly a piece of cake. Nothing in here ever feels threatening, nor is it all that interesting. But flat color backgrounds with a couple of tornado man tiles does not make a good aesthetic. In fact, there's times where the visuals are outright hard on my eyes. Yeah, I did kind of get a bit of that. Never mind some of the broken camera scrolling. In other words, there is really no aesthetics to be had here. It's not terribly offensive outside of the visuals. Particular personal props for the split path for two energy elements being right at the start of the level, making it one of the least offensive second elements I've encountered in a while, but doesn't do nearly enough to be good. Shinryu, 14 out of 100. To be honest, I'm more fascinated by the level's name than the level itself. What does it even mean, if anything? Either way, there is not a whole lot to talk about with this one. It's a relatively empty stage with very basic enemy and gimmick applications, to the point where, even after replaying this stage numerous times, it's kind of a struggle to remember any one distinct section of it, outside of perhaps the methods for getting both tokens. At the very least, I can commend having a split path that's e easy to access, given it's directly at the start of the stage. That aside, the only other major thing to comment on here would be the visuals. They're severely lacking, to put it mildly. I guess that might be an intentional joke, given the level's name. If that's actually the case, though, I don't really think the joke was worth it. Patchy, 36 out of 100. Aesthetic isn't. I'm enjoying these new words. That's a major irony of a title if I ever saw one. Well, it did get one thing right, it is a piece of cake. Yummy. There are two paths. Both of them are relatively simple and aren't really all that remarkable, other than the occasional screen flashes in the form of bright background tiles. I guess that's supposed to be the aesthetics? Fancy font? At least the split happens right at the beginning, but I don't know if the split was very necessary to begin with. The stage could have been combined as one, and it would have flowed just the same for how themeless both sections were. For each end, you fight Dustman and Anchor, respectively. They're very standard ones with no changes to their arenas to spice things up. One interesting bug did happen where Anchor's element had spawned inside the boss gate and got pushed off screen because he died too close to the wall there? Whoops. Oh dear. That's unfortunate. Flashman85, 32 out of 100. I have to wonder about who's been decorating the cakes you've seen, unless you mean aesthetics in the sense of this piece of cake plays music. I'll give you credit for the subtle difference in floor color between pads and for competent foreground graphics, but the unappetizing solid colored backgrounds and occasional moments of overzealous window tiling offer no sense of place or wonder. As for creativity, I want anything, anything at all. Create something. Don't just drop one or two random enemies onto boring platforms, and especially don't let whole screens go by without any real danger, unless you're giving the player a break or setting up a surprise. One enemy acting as a shield for another enemy is a good first step, but it's not enough to carry the entire level. Three main things make up my total score here. An absence of problems with construction or programming, a lack of anything to aggravate me or to justify a skip teleporter, and the fact that I give five points for a perfectly acceptable soundtrack. Apart from screen transitions being indistinguishable from pits, this short level is easy enough to navigate. Checkpoints are sufficiently frequent, collision and transition objects are used correctly, that you can blindly fall onto tallies in one spot, each path has a couple of prominent enemies or gimmicks, so there's the vaguest sense of focus. Challenge introductions are passable if for no other reason than that enemies are usually introduced one at a time in the blindest setting possible. Although Rush Jet and Laser Trident obliterate what little challenge there is, the design allows for freedom of weapon use without needless restrictions. 
I care about the title accurately describing the level, and despite the contentious aesthetics portion, the level is indeed a piece of cake. A Spark, 28 out of 100. Piece of cake with aesthetics. Well, that was a lie. I mean, hey, it was half right. So overall, this stage didn't really do anything too terribly offensive, but I don't think it did anything too terribly bold either. Like, the whole thing of getting the key to the gate, I think that was one of the main things this stage did that maybe stood out. But it was kind of cool to see Anchor. He is my favorite of the Mega Man killers, so I was kind of happy to see him get used. But yeah, overall, an okay stage, but yes. Some of the backgrounds were a bit hard on the eyes. Not motion sickness man inducing, but not the most pleasant to look at when it was just that one window tiled over the entire screen. And finally, 169th place, the cave level that exists by Big Rocker Ending. 26.4 out of 100. 6.6 in design, 4.4 in fun, 2 in creativity, 5.4 in aesthetics, 8 in functionality. Mick, 22 out of 100. Not gonna lie, this was kinda pointless. A whole lot of nothing happened, and there's not much to comment on. About the only gameplay worth bringing up at all is the double dev kit boss, which is bad because they tend to overlap like crazy and be a pain to dodge. Yeah, and the unnecessarily big rooms, which is still bad, because there's nothing to do except get lost for no reason. Beyond that, only real comments are that the visuals are extremely bland. There's a broken slope, and the music is nice. I still kind of wonder if the double boss was meant to be underwater, because it really felt like it should have been. Shinryu, 15 out of 100. Yep, it sure does. In all seriousness, though, there's not much going on with this level. Many of the room layouts are pretty bare bones, featuring a lot of wide open spaces that makes most of the enemies a non-issue, even more so when coupled with higher jumps, granted by water physics. This is, this is especially true for the Mecha Dragon fight, as you're given four whole screens to deal with him. Beyond those issues, the only other noteworthy thing here is the double boss fight. Unless you're going to set them up so that their movements and attacks play off or complement each other in some way, fighting two bosses at once is typically more of a pain than anything. Just sticking Bubble Man and Sonic Man in a room together, regardless of how large it is, really doesn't work out. Patchy, 37 out of 100. The loud music that exists! As well as inconsistent volume. Audio mixing, people! Well, this level certainly lives up to its name. It's a few screens of enemies, and the only thing going on is the cave story aesthetics. Oh, is that where the graphics were from? Okay. As far as crossover stages go, this is unfortunately quite barren. It seems the collisions of the slopes are misaligned, often Mega Man cannot traverse through a set of them without getting stuck in the ground. Another issue is that sometimes it's difficult to tell if you're out of water or submerged, since the water tiles look very similar to empty tiles at first glance. Also, it doesn't help that screen transitions would mask the whole splash effect when normally going out of water. True. I seem to be really bad at fighting Bubble Man on ground, as the fight with him and Sonic Man felt quite unfair with the lava tiles on the ground, limiting mobility. Bubble Man's buster shots are very hard to dodge without the water physics. Meanwhile, Sonic Man will punish you if you don't stand bound to the ground close to him at all times. The Mecha Dragon, on the other hand, is completely non-threatening with so much ground to stand on in its arena, trivializing the fight. Flashman 85. 35 out of 100. What a title. The confidence you have in your level is exceptional. Ironically, this barely feels like a cave after the first couple of screens. However, it does feel like some DOS games I've played. Minimalistic, but not altogether unappealing graphics, large free-scrolling areas with no sense of challenge progression, and enemies haphazardly introduced and then forgotten forever. Now that you bring that up, I kind of feel like some of the interior rooms where it was just big wide open spaces with blocky platforms and everything, I think I was almost getting kind of Commander Keen vibes in a way. No bards will sing of this level's clunky layout or lackluster architecture. Not that anyone would be able to hear them over the music, mind you. Volume aside, the relaxed audio is a good fit for the level, and one of the only reasons I enjoyed myself at all. At the very least, the level needs more background detail. The teleporter statue is a good start. More polished use of collision objects, e.g. putting water collision over the top solid platforms. And some sense of focus beyond random water enemies sometimes, I guess. As a side note, if you're going to use a thematically unrelated Flashman NPC in a contest where one of the judges is named Flashman, give him dialogue I might actually say. Zawarudo, indeed. Water physics inexplicably disappear where they're needed most. With low gravity, Sonic Bubble could have it could have been a genuinely fun fight instead of the part where you give up on a no damage run. 
good call on the weapon refill at the gate, though. I would have loved to battle Mecha Dragon in a submerged er area with larger hops between fewer platforms. Even moving the dragon into the center of the arena would have been an improvement. All that room to work with, and the dragon hangs out so far off screen that you're basically tickling its feet with whatever weapon will reach. Yes, this level certainly does exist, but it needs a better selling point than it does not not exist. And Ace Spark, 23 out of 100. If you aren't going to put in any effort, if you aren't going to put any effort in, neither am I. Loyana also disliked this. I feel like this one tried to go for aesthetics, but overall, it did still kind of feel a bit empty. I think there was some direction here, there is some potential here, but it needed a bit more polish to truly bring that out, and I do feel like the Bubble Man Sonic Man fight would have been more fun if it had actually been underwater, because it really feels like it should have been. But overall, not a bad stage. So that, that's where we're going to call it for now. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.